everyone and welcome to another Sot and Brain Hub video. I'm Deeps and in today's video I'll be talking about a tricky little bit of the cervical plexus called the ansa cervicalis. Now this can be a little bit difficult to wrap your head around so what we're going to do is a rapid overview of all the important stuff and simplify it for you. The important things to remember are firstly the ansa cervicalis is a fancy word to describe a loop of nerve fibres in the neck. It can be simplified into two main parts the superior root and the inferior root. Finally, the nerve fibres that make up the ansa cervicalis come from different nerves. The superior root is made up of fibres from C1 and travel with the hypoglossal nerve to get to the neck, while the inferior root is made up of fibres from C2 and C3 spinal nerves. Now I know that was a lot of information, so let's start putting that all into context and have a look at our diagram which shows some of the structures on the right side of the neck. Let's orientate ourselves around the bones and muscles in this area first. Right at the top, in white, we have our hyoid bone. Now this is pretty important as it acts as an attachment for multiple muscles. The muscles that attach to the hyoid bone and continue upwards are called the suprahyoid muscles and these work to elevate the hyoid and the floor of the mouth to help with swallowing. The ones that attach to the hyoid and continue downwards are called the infrahyoid muscles or the strap muscles, and these are the ones we've shown here on the diagram. Let's take a second to go through each of them one by one. At the top, we have our thyrohyoid muscle, which goes on to attach to the thyroid cartilage. More superficially, we have our sternohyoid muscle, which attaches to the sternum and the end of the clavicle. Right next to that, we have our omohyoid muscle, which has two bellies that are united by an intermediate tendon in the middle. This tendon is connected to the clavicle by a fascial sling. And last but not least, we have our sternothyroid muscle. And this is wider than the sternohyoid and lies directly underneath it. This is the only infrahyoid muscle that actually doesn't attach to the hyoid bone. Instead, it attaches to the thyroid cartilage and the sternum. All of the strap muscles we've covered play a role in depressing the hyoid and the floor of the mouth and raising the larynx while swallowing. The reason we've taken a while to look at each of these is because all of them are innovated by the ansa cervicalis via its different branches. Now let's have a quick look at the vasculature before we talk about the nerves. Standing out in red, we have our common carotid artery. Towards the top of the image, we can see it bifurcating into the internal and external carotid, and we've labelled the first three branches of the external carotid for you. A little more laterally, we have our internal jugular vein. Our common carotid and our internal jugular vein are both encased in the carotid sheath, which is a fibrous connective tissue that holds the vasculature of the neck together. And embedded in its anterior wall, we have the subject of our video, the ansa cervicalis, a nerve loop made up of fibres from C1, 2 and 3. Let's start off by having a look at our superior root, which descends in front of the carotid artery. Right at the top, you can see that it branches off of the hypoglossal nerve which is the 12th cranial nerve. And that's because some fibres of C1, and sometimes C2, hitchhike a ride on the hypoglossal nerve in order to reach the neck. Some of these fibres continue with the hypoglossal nerve to supply the thyrohyoid and geniohyoid muscle. Now just as a note, we've shown the branch to the thyrohyoid in this image, but not to the geniohyoid because it's not one of the strap muscles. Some of the fibres of C1 leave the hypoglossal nerve and drop downwards to form the superior root of ansa cervicalis. Now some diagrams and specimens may differ slightly with the branches shown in this diagram, and that's because anatomical variation in this area can be quite common. But the important thing to remember here is that the superior root carries fibres from C1 and provides branches to three main muscles, the superior belly of omohyoid, and the superior portions of sternothyroid and the sternohyoid muscles. Sorted. Now let's have a quick look at the inferior root. As you can see, this descends down in front of the internal jugular vein and is made up of fibres from C2 and C3. These descend down and join with the superior root, forming the loop of ansa cervicalis, and its branches go on to supply three muscles as well. Just like before, because it's the inferior loop, it supplies the inferior belly of omohyoid and the inferior portions of the sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscle. Fantastic! 
So today we've covered the nerve loop called Ansa cervicalis. Let's have a quick look at the important points before we finish. Firstly, the junior hyoid and thyrohyoid muscles are innervated by C1 fibres that travel with the hypoglossal nerve. Secondly, the superior root supplies the superior belly of omohyoid and the upper parts of the sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscles. While finally, the inferior root innervates the inferior belly of omohyoid as well as the lower portions of sternothyroid and sternohyoid. Now, it wouldn't be a Sutton Brain Hub video if we didn't give you a handy mnemonic to help you remember all of these muscles. So get your pens poised and scribble down. Ghosts thought someone stupid shot Isabel, which stands for junior hyoid, thyrohyoid, superior omohyoid, sternothyroid, sternohyoid, and inferior omohyoid. All the muscles innervated by ansa cervicalis going from the superior root to the inferior root. Simple stuff, right? Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and check out our website for more resources. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.